Hello everyone, this is Ali, your very own uh, from AW with Gaurega. Uh, today's topic basically focuses on the exposure triangle. Now, a lot of beginner photographers out there, uh, you guys, once you start your photography journey, and once you start switching from the auto mode of your camera to the manual uh, mode, you get confused, you get a little problematic with the settings, the basic three settings that are available inside your camera, the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. Now it's the combination of all uh, these three aspects that give you the proper exposure. So today's video is all about that. It's for beginner photographers out there. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Do leave a like, do comment, and turn on those bell notification icons if you haven't done already. We are well past 100 subscribers. It's all because of you guys. So without any further waiting to do, let's jump straight in to the video. Let's take you there. Coming up. All right, let's talk about uh, the three pillars that make up the exposure. The ISO, uh, the aperture, and the shutter speed. First on my list for you guys today is the ISO. Now the concept of ISO is uh, not very complex to understand. At the very basic level, it's the sensitivity of the sensor inside your camera to the light that is coming in. Uh, inside your camera, you can change the ISO settings. You can raise it and you can lower it down. If you raise your ISO, you're gonna get brighter images. The sensor is going to get more sensitive to the incoming light and it's gonna boost your exposure up. Wherever there is low light environment, you can boost your ISO up. If you boost your ISO, there is another factor that starts to come into play inside the photograph or the video that you are trying to take and that is the grain. So you need to balance it out. At the other hand, if you lower your ISO, you're gonna get less exposed photographs and videos. The lower ISOs generally give you the best possible results inside your camera because that is almost the native ISO level, ISO 100 or even in some cameras a little lower than that. That is going to give you the best possible result the sensor or the camera system that you have is offering you. So a lower ISO is going to uh, lower the exposure, a higher ISO is going to raise the exposure inside your camera system. Right, next up is aperture. Now the aperture is basically the opening inside your lens which has a variable value. Uh, you can open the aperture completely wide to allow maximum amount of light to enter your camera or you can, you know, close the aperture or reduce the size of the aperture to allow less amount of light to, to come in and hit your sensor. Uh, now larger apertures are used in low light situations where there is less light and you want maximum amount of light to come in and hit your sensor. Uh, whereas smaller apertures are used outside in bright uh, daylight where there is a lot of uh, ambient light available and you want to reduce the light that is coming or for long exposure photography out there. Now once you open the lens wide, you're gonna get that depth of field effect, which is your background is gonna turn blurred and your subject is going to be perfectly in focus for you guys. Aperture is basically represented through f-stop numbers. Now there's a small catch over here. The smaller the f-stop number, the larger your aperture is going to be. For example, if you're using an f-stop number of 1.4, that is 1.4, 1.8, that's gonna really open the aperture wide. And if you're using a larger f-stop number, the aperture is gonna go small. So this is the only catch that there is. This is just at the beginner level of things. Just try to understand the concepts and then, you know, we can start applying these concepts further once we move down the professional photography lane. Also, if you guys want to learn the, in detail about aperture, ISO and shutter speed, I have three videos which are included in my channel. Uh, the playlist is Camera Basic Series. Do check that out. I'm gonna link the card over here or somewhere over here. Do check those out if you want an in-depth uh, detail of what these three concepts mean for you guys. All right, now coming over to the last uh, pillar of the exposure triangle, that is uh, shutter speed. Now, what is a shutter? Shutter is basically a flap inside uh, your sensor that covers it. Once you press the shutter button, the flap opens, letting in a fixed amount of light and then closes in front of the sensor. Now, shutter speed is basically the speed at which that shutter is moving. It can be really, really fast. It can be a slow shutter speed. Now you can adjust your shutter speed inside your camera using the manual settings. Now shutter speed uh, are, is represented by uh, numbers in seconds. For example, the lowest shutter speed in some cameras is generally 30 seconds, 15 seconds, or even a minute. And faster shutter speeds are represented through fractions of a second. For example, it can be one over one thousandth of a second, one over two thousand of a second, one over five thousand of a second, ten thousand of a second. So those are really faster shutter speeds. Now faster shutter speeds are basically used 
uh, when you're trying to shoot motion, uh, trying to shoot uh, action or uh, an object where you want to freeze the motion. For example, there's a bird flying, you want to freeze the motion of that bird or a sports event going on. You want to freeze the motion and show how the soccer player is going to kick the ball. So, faster shot speeds are basically used to shoot motion and uh, something that is in action. And now, slower shutter speeds, once you slow the shutter speed down, that is going to give you a, a lot of light is going to come inside your camera uh, because the shutter is going to close slowly. So, that is going to expose your image to a lot of light. However, slower shutter speeds with an ND filter uh, a system that you place in front of your lens, we'll talk about it in some other video, neutral density filter or a polarizer. Slower shutter speeds are basically used for long exposure photographs uh, where you are trying to shoot, uh, let's suppose, uh, a moving stream of water or a waterfall and you want that beautiful blurry look, you want that smooth silky look in the water, you're going to use a slower shutter speed. Now I'm going to give you a small little bonus tip uh, in the end. And that is to adjust your aperture first whenever you are shooting. Then adjust your shutter speed to get the correct exposure. And even if then you're not getting the correct exposure, your photograph is overexposed or underexposed. In the last touch your ISO. Uh, this was the last tip from my side. These were th the three basic pillars that uh, make up the exposure triangle. Tried to explain them as best as I could. This was just a beginner's video. If, you, if any, uh, you know, uh, top of the line professional photographer is watching this, this video is also for you guys. It doesn't matter whether you're a professional or a beginner photographer. You know, always getting the basics refreshed is a fresh thing to do. This is uh, AW Pixotica. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe, do leave a like, and turn on those bell notification icons. Please support this channel, doing a great job. This channel is all for you guys and all because of you guys, wherever I am. Uh, so I'm signing off for now, inshallah. See you in another video really, really soon. Bye-bye.